Here's Goodnight Olive making her move to take the lead by ahead around the far turn. Ray's Kane has nearly 10 lengths to make up. So does Scooby Guando, verifying the leader. Top of the stretch, Tappet Trice is coming on to the outside. Up to the mark is running late behind Master of the Seas. Set piece down the center of the course. Master of the Seas alongside Annapolis. Here's a Luce Princess coming after Maj and Mission of Joy tries to find room between that pair. Maj has the lead. Mission of Joy second, a Lucy Princess third. The champ in front. Good night, Olive. Chased all the way. Tap it twice. Tap it twice. Wins the Toyota Bluegrass. We've got an update to Tap It Trice winning the Toyota Bluegrass. Today was Bluegrass Day. Hi again, everybody. Jeremy Plunk here with Horse Player Now. And I guess when we recut the open, we will be saying Sierra Leone wins the Toyota Bluegrass. What a great day today at Old Keeneland. An all-time record handle was set today. The most money ever bet on a card at Keeneland. $29.2 million. Eclipsing by more than a million dollars the previous biggest betting day in Keeneland history, that being the bluegrass of two years ago in 2022. All-time record handle set in the All-Stakes pick five, that more than $1.6 million. And the most money ever bet in the win play show pool in a race in Keeneland history, $2.5 million sent in just in the whips pools, the straight pools. For the Bluegrass Stakes. What a great day it was. Great day for Chad Brown, the trainer. He won three races. Tyler Gaffleone, who rode the winner, Sierra Leone. He won three races on the card. A fabulous day of racing all around. Before we get into tonight's preview of the Sunday card, we'll take you through all nine races on the Sunday action. Let's go back and relive start to finish. Sierra Leone didn't want to go into the starting gate, but he sure wanted to finish up strong. Here's Kurt Becker's call of the 100th historic Bluegrass Stakes. And they're off in the Toyota Bluegrass. There goes Top Connor out for the early lead. Top Connor right out of the gate and right to the front. Just a touch moves up toward the outside to press the issue now in second. Door knock away third. Good Money is in fourth position. Epic Ride is a wide fifth. BU is away running in sixth. Sees the gray between horses seventh. Lat long a bit wide around the first turn. Three lanes off the rail in eighth. Sierra Leone is in ninth position. Mugatu is last of the ten. Top Connor is the leader. Top Connor on top by three quarters of a length. Headed on to the back stretch. Just a touch goes second just off his flank in 23.13 five seconds for the opening quarter. And then further back, Epic Ride is third by just a neck. Door knock is fourth against the rail, just two lengths off the lead. Gap of two more. BU sneaks up the rail into the fifth position. Good money, sixth on the outside. And is followed by Seize the Gray in seventh. Lat Long is eighth. Mugatu is ninth. And Sierra Leone is last of ten, facing a lot of traffic to deal with. Onto the far turn, 46.48 seconds. The time for that first half mile. Top Connor, the leader. Top Connor leads a length and a half. Just a touch is second by a length to Epic Ride, who's third a half length. Door knock is still there and fourth to the inside. And BU is in fifth and still seven lengths off the lead. Now Sierra Leone is toward the center of the pack, looking toward the outside. Eight lengths to make up. Just over a quarter mile to go. Top Connor is the leader. Epic Ride swings wide. Just a touch between horses. Door knock has to shift lanes along with Sierra Leone. That pair out in the center of the track, still five lengths off the lead as they move by the eighth pole. Just a touch has taken the lead from Top Connor. Sierra Leone is running on from the outside. A 16th to go. Sierra Leone comes forward for the lead and deep stretch and wins the Toyota Bluegrass for Tyler Gaffalione. Just a touch was second. Epic ride was third. One minute, 50.08 seconds. What a performance it was when you consider the two, three, four finishes under the wire were the two, three, four runners the, all the way around the racetrack. Top Connor, the pace setter, he backed out of it, but the two, three, four horses stayed in those positions throughout. It was just simply a one man wrecking crew, one horse wrecking crew with Sierra Leone coming from last to first. Again, the pace did not collapse. The front runner did, but the two, three, four finishers in this race were two, three, four throughout. Uh, now we go on to the Kentucky Derby with a legitimate chance to have the first horse to sweep the bluegrass in the Kentucky Derby since strike the gold in 1991. It's hard to believe it's been that long since a horse won both of these races. Of course, we saw Street Sense lose here in Lexington and go on and win the Kentucky Derby in 2007. But uh, this feels like it could be Sierra Leone's year. He galloped out beautifully after the race. So 
big feelings towards the Kentucky Derby. Knock on wood that he stays healthy, trains forwardly, and moves on to Churchill Downs. A little bit of bookkeeping because you don't see this in the tote system. It's not easy to find sometimes immediately afterwards. But there was the big three pick three today. That wager was held between Keeneland, New York, and also Santa Anita. The big three pick three. That returned 110-3, the order there. Resilience won the Wood Memorial just prior to the Sierra Leone victory in the Bluegrass. And then later on, it was Stronghold for Phil D'Amato pulling the minor upset in the Santa Anita Derby. 110-3, the order of finish for the big three pick three. That $3 minimum bet paid $226.50. So $226.50, the return on a very nice sequence. I loved Resilience in the Wood and uh, worked out well for me today. Uh, resilient Sierra Leone top picks in there and stronghold a horse that was definitely in the mix. Uh, so hopefully you connected on that wager as well as all the big wagers today uh, at Keeneland. A little bit more review before we get into handicapping uh, tomorrow's card. Uh, it looked like the fall meet all over again today. Uh, horses from the 2023 fall meet were back in stakes company and doing their thing, just like nothing had changed over the course of the winter. Uh, we saw the Jessamine stakes winner, Buku, come back and win the Appalachian stakes. So she's now won the big two-year-old turf filly race and the big three-year-old turf filly race, Buku, with a victory today. Uh, we saw Alma, Star, and Vava rematch from the race last year, uh, that being in the Raven Run stakes. They came back to Today in the Madison against older horses, they're now four, and they repeated one, two, but it was a different finish. Alva Star this time on top, Vava coming up just second. But again, these horses from Keeneland from 2023 held their form into 2024. It's a great horse for course track, and when they like it here in the past, they tend to like it the next time they run. And then Arzak, a horse who had won the uh, turf race in the fall, the Woodford, the turf sprint, came back and won the Shaker Town. So he won the big fall and the big spring races in succession. Three different stakes today, three different results that looked a lot like 2023 fall meet. The lesson here is horses who like Keeneland love Keeneland, and you want to play them back. Also today on the card, Irad and Jose Ortiz each picked up two wins, so riders that are doing well. We're going to see John Velasquez back on the card Sunday here at Keeneland as we look ahead to the Sunday program for Beaumont Stakes Day. John Velasquez was absent today from uh, Keeneland because he went up to uh, Aqueduct to ride, and his Wood Memorial Mount was the aforementioned Resilience. It was a good road trip for the Hall of Famer Johnny V. He also rides the Kentucky Derby favorite Fierceness, so Resilience will be looking for a new rider, I'm sure, uh, heading towards the uh, Kentucky Derby. But all that said, we had a good handicapping day here. Uh, some other handicappers had even better days. Kim Nelson in the Handicapper Selectors Box. You're going to get all of, all the picks from the handicappers here in just a moment. Six winners on top for Kim, and they weren't all chalk. She had a heck of a day today, so hats off to Kim. Uh, Scott had another good day. Scott Hazel did another four-win day. I think he had four opening day, four today. Kim had three opening day and six today. I mean, they're really lighting it up. Uh, uh, we improved our stock from two to three today. Uh, looking forward to a bigger day on Sunday, but caught the key wagers, and that's what we're looking at when we get to our uh, snapshot of the card. We hit that big key wager early in the day, 10 to 1 morning line shot. Bill Al in race number two came through for us. We had a cold trifecta for 160 some bucks, uh, 157 in race number three. So a good early part of the card. Things clicked right on uh, the multi-race wagers later in the day. So uh, hopefully you had a good day at Keeneland on Saturday, and let's do it here again on Sunday. All right, let's get to the Sunday card and take a look at the snapshot. Here is the way the races line up for a nine-race program. Now, with a nine-race card at Keeneland, this is our first one of the season. Keep in mind, with the way these wagers overlap, race number five is going to be part of the early pick five and the late pick five. So as we give you the snapshot, the early pick five starts in race one. It'll be races one through five. The early pick four starts in race two will be races two through five. As we get down and see, race four starts the pick six, the first of my key plays in that one. Race number five is the second of my key plays on the card. It starts the late pick five. So that race five, I mean, that is a centerpiece swing race, as I like to call it. It's part of all the early and late multi-race wagers. So really focus in on race number five. Turf pick three starts in that fifth race as well. So there is a lot cooking from race number five on this card, the way it shakes out. Race number six will start the late pick four. Coast Stakes features on Sunday the Palisades for turf sprinters. Uh, for the youngsters, this will be, uh, I believe, three-year-old fillies in the uh, Palisades turf sprinting. 
uh, Turf Pick 3 is part of that one. We've got a play for you in there. The Beaumont Stakes for the three-year-old Philly Sprinters go seven-eighths of a mile. Brad Cox had a tough beat today in the bluegrass. He'll have the big favorites for the Beaumont. And race number nine is going to wrap things up with the super high five and the final leg of the turf pick three. Rolling daily doubles and pick threes throughout the card. And as we told you yesterday, and we strategized in our key daily double plays, this 15% takeout daily double is really good news for horse players. You're getting a seven point kickback on all your winnings. And today we were able to take advantage of that. Races two to three got a nice return there where we turned a $9 horse into a $27 daily double uh, with a very short price favored in the next race. Maximize your value, build out around the horses you really like and attack those daily doubles. It's a great way to get an extra bang for your buck and not take those huge risks like the pick fours and the pick fives are where you don't get a lot of churn. You don't get a lot of winnings. You might hit a big one every once in a while, but you're not consistently making scores like you can be uh, in the daily doubles. So those daily double plays, you want to keep firing at them. So now we know how the card sets up. Let's get into handicapping. First of nine on Sunday. First post, of course, one o'clock each racing day. Uh, we're going to start things out in the opener with a two-year-old baby dash. This is Wesley Ward territory. Ward won the opening race uh, for the two-year-olds on Friday. We expect him to do it again here. He's got 42 victories in these races now. The second most is nine for John Hancock. In fact, Ward and Hancock ran one-two in that race on Friday. Friday. Uh, they are represented in this race again. So expect maybe we're looking at the six and eight for Wesley Ward, Sweet Coffee, and Image of Me, and then the 11 West Memorial for John Hancock. So uh, these are the major players in the two year old races at Keeneland. As you look across, West Memorial is getting a little bit of an upset pick, if you will, for the John Hancock trainee from both Tom Leach and Scott Hazelton. Tom hit his long shot play of the day. Uh, nice payoff in the uh, stakes race in the Commonwealth. So uh, hats off to Tom. Again, the handicappers all did really well. Bo Cruz, $14 winner for Tom as his long shot play of the day in the Commonwealth Stakes on Saturday. So he and Scott are going to team up and go with West Memorial. You're trying to split the Wesley Ward trainees in here. The six sweet coffee is a uh, half the coffee maker, a, a, a horse who was, you know, really good here as a two-year-old winning uh, off by about six lengths in a baby dash in 2021. Uh, so this is a pedigree to kind of run right back. I rat Ortiz coming off a two-win day. Image of me, the other one for Wesley Ward in here certainly has to be respected. Pedigree to love it here as a two-year-old by Hoot Nanny. Hoot Nanny, of course, won here during the poly track era, I believe, or on the, uh, turf sprinting, I think it was, when he broke his maiden. But you're looking at a horse who last year, Hoot Nanny as a sire, produced two baby dash winners here during the Keeneland meet spring 2023. So we know he can get one to win early. We know Wesley Ward gets him to win early. So six and eight, I think you're kind of splitting hairs between the two. Might get a little bit better price on the eight image of me with Gerardo Corrales riding versus Irad Ortiz named on the six week coffee. So I went eight, six in here looking for a little bit of the value in that sense of uh, the four Baytown Cleopatra's got a big workout. Alvin Jimenez rides there. He's got a really good percentage of winning here in these four and a half for long dash races. So I've got it eight, six, four, but if you want to use the 11 in there, certainly uh, plenty of endorsement uh, for any John Hancock training in these two year old races. Let's move from the kickoff leg of the pick five to the kickoff leg of the pick four. That'll be race number two on the card. This is starter allowance company here, six furlong sprint. We're looking for horses forwardly placed typically in six furlong races at Keeneland. I know there's been a lot of banner and talk about the track being speed favoring, but we saw horses get from off the pace. I think second race on the card today was one from off the pace. Obviously Sierra Leone came from well off the pace speed wins at Keeneland about 70% of the time. Like it does most anywhere, you know, unless there's a big weather change or a big track maintenance change, you're not going to see a change in that horses that get to the front are going to be best most of the time. That's just the way it works in dirt racing, especially um, at Keeneland. So we're trying to find a horse going six furlongs that can get towards the front in here. Supremely, I think, might be able to get back to some of that early speed that this horse showed back in, um, in November at Churchill. The last two times on the synthetic at Turfway really didn't get out of first gear. So I'm hoping to move back to dirt. Tyler Gaffleone's riding really well. I'm hoping that Supremely can get out of the gate, get into the race quickly, and uh, go on from there. So I've got the three Supremely as my top pick here in race number two. In the second race, we look across the uh, other handicappers. Tom's also got Supremely, as does Kim. Oncoming train, the six for Scott Hazelton and JP Race. I like those initials. Maybe Gabby's got the right uh, mojo with that one. Uh, her top pick, that one coming off the synthetic. There's not a lot of early speed in this race. Who makes the front in here, I think, 
can kind of dictate the race. The one Hocus has a chance maybe to show a little bit of speed. But again, I'm hoping the three can do so. This is a starter allowance $30,000 level, which means the horses had to appear once in their career for $30,000 or less. So I'm looking for somebody who'd hit the max. Only once in their career they ran for a tag. Once they ran for $30,000 and they happened to win. That's exactly the best case scenario you can have to be eligible for this race. And that's exactly what Supremely did. The one drop for $30,000 in November at Churchill won. And not only one, but one on the front end that day. So a repeat of that, I think, put supremely in the winner's circle. That's going to be uh, my play in race number two. Third race next up on the card as we take a look at the snapshot. This is one of the rare cases all day where a multi-race wager is not kicking in. But of course, race number three is going to be second leg of the early pick four, third leg of the early pick five. And I thought this was a wide open race with some decent options. We're back into another starter allowance company in here. I've got one at a price in here. Let's see if we can't. Maybe we're chasing a little bit here, but I'm going to take a shot in here with Barksdale, who's 15 to one uh, in the morning line and I'm on the island you look across the way nobody else has Barksdale even in the top three now it's Tyler Gaffleone getting the call here for William Walden so I love this jockey change I mean you're going from Ashton at Turfway to Gaffleone here at uh, Keeneland major major uh, rider upgrade here this is a son of Street Sense, and Street Sense, of course, last year had a big year at Kingland. Uh, produced four or five winners on the main track, hit about 25% uh, with his offspring. The blinkers come off, so, you know, a little equipment change, they'll shake things up, and it's the second start after a layoff for Barksdale. So that's usually a good form cycle move. The horse needs a race on the first time back, and now they change the surfaces, too, from the uh, synthetic to the dirt. Maybe this horse moves forward twice we can, and we get uh, Barksdale with an improved rider here. So I'm taking a shot, 15 to 1 in the morning line. Maybe we won't get that price. Not a super confident pick, and that's why even though it's a 15 to 1, I'm not using it as one of my key plays of the day. But we're going to take a little stab in here with the uh, 8 Barksdale. Across the way with the other handicappers, you see this looks like a wide open race. I wrote wide open race, decent options at the top of my page. And when I look here at the page of the handicappers at Keelan.com, the 11's picked on top, the 1's picked on top, the 6, the 7, I've got the 8. Five handicappers, five different horses on top. This is certainly a spread race in the multi-race wagers, and you've got every license you want to take a shot at a little bit of a price uh, here in race number 3. Let's go to the fourth on the card, and this will be the first of my key plays of the day. Pick six starts here. The pick six was hit on Saturday. Payoff in the pick six was what I have. I've got that written down here somewhere. That returned $36,000 for the pick six today. $511,000 was bet into the carryover. We had a $66,000 carryover from Friday into Saturday. The pick six was hit for $36,000 on the $1 play. So we start a new, no carryover in the pick six, but in race number four, I've got a key play in here. And the name is Yes, Indeed. And we hope that Kurt Becker's saying yes, indeed, at the wire. Race number four, top choice in here, the three, yes, indeed. Comes off a race at the fairgrounds for Cherie DeVoe. The fairgrounds horses are running well on the main track here early in the meet. This is an $850,000 purchase and the two-year-old sales last year by Bolt Doral. This horse is expected to be, you know, a, a win early candidate. Didn't fire the first time, but second out was much, much improved, going a mile and a 16th. Should be inside speed in here. The one sing a little song doesn't have a lot of speed. The two twirling good times probably going to break for a Phil Bauer barn that just can't miss. Bauer had another win today. Don't be surprised if the two twirling good times effective in here. But I think, yes, indeed, the three is going to be near the front in here with a good post draw. And I like the post draw. I'm taking the shot here. Brian Hernandez rides positive rider here. And I like the horses coming out of fairgrounds in this particular condition. Uh, this is a rare one, but in entry-level allowance races like this in the spring meet, uh, the route races, fairgrounds horses have 12 wins over the year. Gulfstream have eight. We rarely see any category where fairgrounds horses win more often than Gulfstream horses historically. Now, in the last year or two, there's been a nice swing, even more momentum towards the fairgrounds horses per se than the Gulfstream. So historically, first level allowance races, these horses are coming up from fairgrounds and do very, very well. This one coming off the win, that's another reason why I'm on yes indeed, and I love that good post position, post three going the mile and the 16th with some tactical speed. As for the other handicappers here in race number four, we look across the way, twirling good time, 
also picked by Kim and Scott. The two hot handicappers are both on the same horse. Twirling good time has to be respected for sure. I've got Yes Indeed along with Tom. Sing a little song for Gabby. Uh, everybody's got a little bit of a mix towards the inside. The ones, twos, and threes all get some love in this particular spot. Others you want to watch for the exactus tries, maybe the six befriended. Brad Cox's horses in mile in the 16th races here at Keeneland are just exceptional over the years. 31% wins for Brad Cox at a mile and a 16th on the dirt at Keeneland. Uh, so I wouldn't be shocked at all if Befriended's right in this mix. And the eight, Pretty Anna, another one who came in from Fairgrounds. So Pretty Anna's kind of got a little bit of the same profile as number three, Yes Indeed. But I think Yes Indeed's got a little bit more uh, advantage in terms of the post position in here. It might actually be a little bit better price. Pretty Anna's been bet hard, even money in both career starts. And Rosario rides there. He's probably going to take more national simulcast money than Brian Hernandez will. So give me the better price and give me the better post position with the three, Yes Indeed. Indeed, but certainly if you like a horse like the three for a lot of the same reasons you like the three, you would also like the eight in here. But better post, better price. That's why the three, yes, indeed, becomes one of my key plays of the day in race number four. Okay, race number five is next. And again, this is the swing race of the day. I mean, this is everything that you're looking at in terms of the multi-race wagers, right? Again, race number five is going to be last leg of the early pick five. It's going to be the last leg of the early pick four. And it's going to be the first leg of the late pick five. So it's involved in everything except the late pick four on the card. We've got a big field turf sprint in here. You know, I like my threes, fours, and fives. We didn't click with that today. Uh, the six, Arzak won the uh, turf sprint today, the Shaker Town. Uh, but in this race, I think, again, we go back to a key play here. I love these posts, three, four, and five in big field turf sprints like this. And so Hideki, run for the hills are two horses in those power posts that I really like. Now, I don't just bet those posts blindly because the three in here is a horse. I really don't care for the three in a turf sprint here. So I didn't just blindly take three, four, five in here. But if I've got horses in the three, four, five that I think are good handicapping options, then they get the post advantage. That's why I'm on them. Hideki lost just by a head here at um, in a similar race back in April of 23. Uh, last time turf sprinting at Churchill in the fall was a winner. And this horse is a horse who can kind of, you know, second off the layoff run really well. Those victories were both second off the layoff performances uh, at Turfway in March of last year and at Churchill in October of last year. Second off the layoff, Hideki has won the last two times in that form cycle. He's his second start since October. He got one race back at Turfway where he didn't show much on the main uh, there at Turfway on the synthetic. Now he gets back to the turf. So I'm giving Hideki a big shot here under Luan Machado. Ryan Walsh trains run for the Hills. Jose Ortiz coming off a of two win days. Another one. I think you've got to watch this horse is 11 for 12 in the superfecta and his last dozen starts 10 to 12 in the trifecta doesn't win often, but is always right there. Now you give that kind of horse a power post and you start to think maybe just that little bit of edge can put him over the top. And again, Jose Ortiz riding. Well, he had two wins on the card today. So the five and the four, two key plays for me here. Now the eight hurricane Debbie got to respect. Wesley Ward, we talk about Wesley Ward's dominance with the two-year-olds on the dirt. We know that. But his dominance in the turf sprints at Keeneland is almost equal. It's not quite, but, I mean, the dominance between Wesley Ward and everybody else and their records in Keeneland turf sprints is remarkable. So Hurricane Debbie here, Johnny V back from that Wood Memorial winning trip today aboard Resilience. He'll pilot with Hurricane Debbie. You've got to respect the eight in here. So four, five, and eight. I love the two power posts. You use the eight in here. So how do we try to maximize this? I think in the exactus, I take four, five on top and then go four, five, eight underneath. So it's not a straight three horse box. I don't like boxing three horses. You start thinning out your combinations. You don't get enough back. You've got to zero in a little bit on an opinion. And to me, I'm going to take those power posts four and five and just use those two in the front spot. But I'm going to use the eight underneath. Uh, so four, five with four, five, eight will be the way I attack the exacta. That would cost four dollars for a dollar exacta. Whereas if you box the three of them, you're spending six dollars. So the way you can do it now is you can throw an extra dollar or two combination on the combination you like best, and you're still investing $6, but when you hit it, you've got one or two of those combinations that have extra money on them. So you're going to get paid more when you're right. You hear me say that a lot. Get paid when you're right. That's what it's all about. When you lose, it doesn't matter what it pays. It's when you're right. So you've got to have the weight on your opinion. So again, my opinion is you go after these fours, threes, fours, and fives in these turf sprints where you can find them, that you like them. And that's why we'll do it. I respect Ward. He could win this race. And if it happens to run 8-4 or 8-5 and I don't have it, I tip my cap and I move on to the next race. There's nothing wrong, uh, you know, with 
putting your money where your opinions are. And if you lose, you just kind of move on to the next and, and go firing at him again. That's what it's all about here. Stand by your opinions and uh, try to attack aggressively. Let's go next on the card to race number six, the sixth race on the card. Pick four company in here, and uh, we start the late pick four. Sixth race will be a mile and a 16th uh, on the main track, and we talked about this a little bit here during the course of these podcasts. Mile and a 16th, Maiden Special, Maiden Special's going long on the dirt, are very formful. These races do not produce large prices. The favorites win at a very high percentage, over 50% historically here in the spring meet. Favorite didn't win the opener on the card today, but it was a short price where three of them hit the wire together. They were all three pretty logical horses, and they were all bet. I think Batten Down ended up the actual favorite and got beat a half length and got beat by another horse in there that wasn't uh, much of a price. Bottom line is long uh, maiden special weight races here on the dirt at Keeneland in this time of year. They're pretty formful. Don't go reaching for the stars. It's just not a race to look for long shots. So as we look across on race number six here from the handicapper selectors box, sit tomorrow, the top pick in here for me and Scott, that runners also pick second across the board, encourage each other. The nine is a horse that is picked on top by two other handicappers. And that horse, the nine is also on the underneath section for me. And then uh, Claire's Jenny, the two, a first time starter, for Phil Bauer, red hot Phil Bauer, he had a win today. And again, he hasn't met any starters this year, but batting about 50% on the year from limited starters. Kim's going with Claire's Jetty. Now, I don't like first time starters based on the stats and trends, but I understand if somebody wants to take a Phil Bauer horse who's working bullets in the morning, uh, there's no big argument to that in most situations. But again, first time starters are not what you're looking for uh, in these races historically. Sidamara just makes a lot of sense to me. Bill Mott trains. He had batten down today. Yeah, they got beat, but they ran a good race, got beat a half length. Big day for Mott. He had a win, a second, and a third on the card today at Keelan. Of course, he trained our key play early in the card, Bill Al, who won impressively uh, coming out of a race at Gulfstream like Sidamara does. Of course, Mott won the Wood Memorial today with resilience on the road. So a lot points to me in here to the five sit tomorrow. I think he's just best in here. Restless Dan, uh, Restless Dreamer, the sixth, though. Chad Brown, Red Hot, Tyler Gaffleone. Again, they teamed up today to win the Bluegrass. They each won three races on the card. They won the finale together in tandem. So they teamed up for two of their three wins each. You can't go wrong with the sixth Restless Dreamer, the way things are going right now for Brown and Gaffleone. And then the nine, encourage each other, is a well-bred son of street sense, cost $350,000. Uh, this one coming off of a similar race against Restless Dreamer last time. So six and nine come out of the same race. You get Todd Pletcher, Irad Ortiz. Uh, Pletcher's already had, what, three, four wins at the meet. He had two on opening day. I think he added one more today. Uh, Irad Ortiz has got a, a couple wins on the Saturday card. So, look, you're looking at five, six, and nine in here that are Mott, Brown, Pletcher, they all look good on paper. They all have standout jockeys. This race, like I said, you're not looking for anything crazy in these races. They're very formful. I wouldn't try to get away from that. Stay clear of, the, of, of getting too deep in here. I like the five best of the bunch, but if you wanted to use Brown or Pletcher in this spot, you get no real big argument out of me. Pick four starts here in race number six. I think at max, you're going three deep. If you can limit it down a little bit more from there, uh, I think you're better off in doing so. So that's the way I see race number six and the rest of the handicappers across the way. Okay, so the seventh race is the Palisades Stakes. It's going to start the, uh, uh, not start the turf pick three. It'll be the second leg of the Keelan turf pick three. And it's also uh, the second of my key plays today. We've got 14 horses entered, uh, 13 and an also eligible in here uh, works for me, or two also eligible, sketch and works for me. So field of 12 expected for the Palisade Stakes. Uh, this race has been run four or five times in, in its history. Three-year-old Colts here. I think I said Phillies earlier, but this is a, the Colts Stakes race. The three-year-old Phillies uh, have their own stakes race uh, um, on the turf sprint side. But the Palisades, about four or five years in existence, uh, race that's been added to the Keeneland slate uh, over the seasons. My boy Prince going to be my top choice in here. And there's a couple different angles. I just absolutely love this horse. Probably my best bet of opening weekend to this point. So I'm in heavy here on the eight, my boy Prince. As we look across uh, amongst the other handicappers, Gabby's also got my boy Prince on top. My boy Prince, second choice by Scott and Kim. And you look at the other handicappers, uh, there are some other options, of course. Fandom's in here for, uh, you know, strong connections. Wesley Ward and Jose Ortiz. Uh, Tom's got that one on top. No Name Mets, a uh, horse who went over to Royal Ascot, as did Fandom. Uh, no Name Mets, a major stakes winner. 
I rat Ortiz rides there. That's Scott's top pick. And refuel is the pick here for Kim. Two for two. This one coming from Gulfstream for Todd Pletcher. $550,000 Keeneland September yearling by Hard Spun. We'll try Keeneland um, and Stakes Company for the first time. They'll all be trying Keeneland for the first time uh, uh, on the turf, except Fandom. Fandom did win here on the turf last year. Uh, Coin Miner, the two, also has a race over the track. But uh, I love the eight in here, my boy Prince. Couple of reasons why. Uh, laying off, turning back, bullets. It's one of my favorite angles. I call it LTB. The horse has been laid up for some time. When they start to, when they come back to the races, they're firing bullets in the morning and they're turning back in distance from something longer in the past. They don't need to be super fit. They just need to be fresh to go turf sprinting. So layoff turn back bullets. That's one of my favorite angles, especially in turf sprint races. The eight, my boy Prince fits that. Cairo Prince, the sire, had a remarkable year last year on the Keeneland turf. 17 horses for Cairo Prince raced on the turf last year at Keeneland. Four wins, four seconds. So eight for 17 in the exact, the four for 17 in the winner's circle. This horse is bred to like the turf here at Keeneland. My boy Prince, we haven't seen since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf when running third, but cutting back in distance, I think is going to be right up the alley for this one. And the jockey, Joel Rosario, he crushes the turf sprint stakes races at Keeneland. Nobody's even close to him in the standings. Don't have the number right in front of me. It's in my blog, but I didn't write it on the past performances. I want to say something like Rosario's got either double or triple the number of turf sprint stakes wins at Keelan than any other rider here in the last, uh, um, you know, in the last uh, decade plus the database goes back to 2006. So uh, I love Rosario on turf sprinters at Keeneland, not just stakes races, but in just general turf sprints, he rides a massive percentage. Good to see him in town to ride this one. My boy Prince going to be my top play of the weekend in the Palisade stakes race number seven. All right, let's go to the, uh, let's see. We had... Uh, race number eight is next up. Yeah, we have a field page for the Beaumont. That's what I was checking on. So here's the field for the Beaumont Stakes, race number eight. Only six of them entered in this one, about seven furlong distance. These are three-year-old fillies. Grade two, 400,000. This is the shorter version of the Ashland Stakes, which was on Friday. Of course, the Ashland horses are going to move on to the Kentucky Oaks. We fully expect that. Sometimes Beaumont horses also try the Kentucky Oaks, and we'll see. Trainer Brad Cox has got the big favorite right now for the Kentucky Oaks in Tarifa. Uh, just FYI, coming off a good second place in the uh, Ashland. Uh, Kenny McPeak had the winner of the Ashland. You know we're going to see those horses go on to the Kentucky Oaks. Would something out of here stretch out to the Kentucky Oaks? Denim and Pearls, maybe, because she's gone long. But the one to beat in here is the one who is really the sprinter of the field, and that's You Almost Had Me. I think she's going to be a fairly short price favorite. We talked about the success uh, earlier on the show about how the full 2023 stakes horses have all come back to run their races. Well, You Almost Had Me was stakes company in the Myrtlewood last year at Keelan, and she looked awesome here over the main track. She comes back. Similar to what it was in the fall of 2023. And if she brings that same kind of game like three different horses did today on the stakes card uh, at Keeneland, then I think she could be a repeat winner. Let's go back to you almost had me winning last year's Myrtle Award. Top of the lane. Field last. You almost had me. Hot beach to the outside. Copper M looking for room toward the inside. You almost had me is the leader. You almost had me. Instantly in front by three lengths. Now by four into the final furlong of the Myrtlewood. Hot Beach goes to second. You almost had me. 16th pole just widening with every stride. You almost had me to win the Myrtlewood. Tyler Gaffalion, three wins on the day. Hot Beach was across the line in second. Fibber came up the inside for third, and Copper M was fourth in one minute, 10.67 seconds. I think we're looking at a short price, and the handicapper's consensus will often tip that off. I think this is the first time we've got a clean sweep where everybody in the consensus, after three days of racing, all have the same horse. Five handicappers, five on top. It's you almost had me for Brad Cox, going to be a very short price, and she's going to be too tough for these, I think. The other Brad Cox training in here is Denim and Pearls. Uh, second choice in here for several of us as well. Tipsy Tammy, the other one that gets some love. Phil Bauer, again, what a season he's had with limited starters around the country and already off to a good start here at Keeneland. 
Brad Cox, Phil Bauer. It's hard to get around 6-1 or 3, 6-3 or 1 uh, in this particular combination. I don't think it's a great betting race, intra race. I'm not telling you to go out and bet a 2-5 to five shot to win. and not telling you to go bet an exacto that pays 680 for a buck. That's not my style. So what do we want to do in this situation? This is the perfect opportunity where we talk about these daily doubles, right? The daily double at Keeneland with the takeout reduced to 15% this meet. This is the perfect opportunity right here. This is what you want to study when you're talking about how to strategize because this is not a good betting race, the eighth race on the card. There's six horses in it. So six, you got a winner and you got five horses you could run second. I mean, there's only five possible combinations in this race if you think that the six is an absolute winner. Even if you think it's chaos, it's only six times five. There's only 30 ways that the Beaumont stakes can turn out for an exacta. But if you look and turn the table to the daily double, Look at the next race on the card. We've got a capacity field in race number nine. Now the math can start working for you. Because remember, losing tickets pay the winning tickets. That's the way this works in paramutual betting. So the bigger the field size, the better your payoffs are going to be. People are going to bet horses in 14, 12, and 14 horse fields that are losing combinations. You know, it's just the way that it works. So let the math work for you here. Look at the daily double from races eight to nine. Also look at the doubles from seven to eight. You have a horse you really like in the seventh race. Look at that daily double into the eighth race because you've got a stone cold winner in here and you almost had me. Unless you think you almost had me is going to get beat. Now, if you think that horse is going to get beat, now your strategy is different and you're attacking aggressively in a, in a fading the favorite situation. But we all think that the six is going to win that race in the, uh, in, in the Beaumont stakes. So I've got a key play that I love in the seventh race. We definitely want to hit that daily double. The Rosario horse going back to our picks in the seventh race. You want to play a daily double 8-6 in the seventh race from My Boy Prince to You Almost Had Me. Let's say My Boy Prince is 3-1 to one and is going to pay $8 in that particular race. You're hoping to get more than that with You Almost Had Me. You're hoping to get $16, $17 on the daily double. And now you're getting twice as much for My Boy Prince to win as you would if you just played him to win, if you play him in a daily double, because you almost had me, we're looking at almost as a free space. Yes, there's some gambling. Yes, there's some risk. That's not 100% certainty that the six wins the next race. But when you're gambling, you're putting the odds in your favor. And so the odds are that horse will win the race, and you're going to get more than double your money on the win bet uh, by playing the daily double. So I would look at eight, six daily double in race number seven. And then you come back in race number eight to race number nine and try to find a horse you like in race number nine. A couple horses maybe that you like. Take two or three shots in here. I'm going to go with the nine justifiable bell in the last race. Let's run through the picks here. Tom also has justifiable bell on top. Uh, Cadencia is the top pick for the ladies in here. Gabby and Kim, the eight. And then Scott's got the three bag lady. So a couple different options in this race. A big field. It's a turf mile, and the reason I've got the horse on top that I do, in turf miles here at Keeneland, horses that are making their first start of the year usually come back really strong. Turf mile allowance races are havens for horses making their first start of the year. Connections kind of save and wait, and they bring good ones back ready to roll. I'm expecting that Justifiable Bell for an Ian Wilkes barn that struggled this winter in Florida, they've saved this one, I think, to run at Keeneland. Been working bullets at the Skylight Training Center. Uh, I'm expecting Justifiable Bell to be well-meant. They go to Luis Saez in here. I think it's a power move. Uh, you don't see a lot of times when Saez is riding for Ian Wilkes, top rider here at Keelan, along with Tyler Gaffleum. I think it's go time off the bench. Justifiable Bell ready to win here at Keeneland. They're going to do it for a big purse, $110,000 in allowance company. So I'm on the nine Justifiable Bell, and the stats say these horses coming back first time of the year. Uh, have a ton of success in these spots. Obviously, you got to expect the 14 Ola Gata if that one draws into the race. Chad Brown, Tyler Gaffleon. We've already talked a million times about what a great day they had and how strong they are in these kind of races. Ola Gata's run five races in a row where he's been right on the wire. Four of them were losses by a narrow amount. And Ola Gata, if he does draw into the race, would be in the 12 hole probably. Uh, so not a great post position, but you'd look at that one for an exact and maybe underneath. But again, you would not want to be playing the daily double to Ola Gata um, from the favorite in the eighth race. You, you you don't want to be playing. You almost had me to Ola Gata, to Chad Brown. I mean, you're looking at a very skinny double, but I think we can get a fair price on the nine in the last race. And that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, uh, to do and the nine horse in here, justifiable bell. So daily double in the uh, feature race, the eighth six, nine late daily double to wrap things up.
that's going to do it for tonight's show. Just nine races. So we got it done a little quicker, 10 minutes sooner on the podcast here today than we had over the uh, weekend. We will be back with you on Tuesday night. Again, we do the Keeneland look ahead, 830 Eastern, the night before every day of the racing season, all 16 days here at Keeneland. So our next day of racing will be Wednesday. Fields are already drawn for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Four days of past performances. We've got them back here somewhere in this big pile of papers. And uh, we'll get to work on those starting Monday morning and and uh, start working towards the week after having a little bit of time tomorrow to get away from handicapping. Enjoy the live racing and the betting uh, on the card tomorrow at Keeneland. And uh, we'll get back to some serious handicapping for next week, uh, starting on Monday. But Tuesday night will be our next show. Uh, if we don't burn up in the solar eclipse on Monday, we'll see you then on Tuesday at 830, everybody. Have a great night. Take care.